Hey yo, what up, it's your boy. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. So for those of you who don't know, your boy has a Patreon, as you can see right here, patreon.com slash the anime man. Links in the description if you'd like to check it out. I've had a lot of you guys supporting me there, thousands of you guys supporting me there for the last couple of years. And I, first of all, super appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. It is totally not a mandatory thing. And yet the fact that so many of you guys have stuck around and enjoyed all of the kinds of rewards and content that I've been giving you guys over there on the Patreon exclusively is really warms my heart and so I figured that I want to give back to you guys even on this second channel right here considering that you know this second channel we've been uploading a lot more often the ball has kind of been rolling so I figured we would keep that ball rolling by introducing a new reward tier for you guys on the upper tiers on the Patreon. Specifically in the two highest tiers, the $25 and the $50 tier. Now you guys already get a whole bunch of stuff, but I figured because you guys are extra nice, extra kind to give me that extra amount every single month, I thought I would give you something extra. So if you guys saw on my Patreon, I have decided to try out this new thing on my second channel where you guys in the $25 and $50 patrons can suggest different content for me to make here on the second channel. And of course, it doesn't have to be anime or otaku related, anything to do with the main channel. The good thing about the Joey channel is that I can literally talk about whatever the hell I want, as long as I have an interest in it and it's something that I would like to share with you guys. So this is the first one of those, and I guess if you guys enjoy it and uh, we get enough cool submissions, then I'll just uh, kind of keep doing it and we'll, we'll see how it goes. So again, if you'd like more information on any other tiers, by the way, I, I do have a whole other bunch of rewards over there. Go over to my Patreon, patreon.com slash the anime man. But without further ado, the first topic that we will be talking about, I guess you guys saw it in the title of this video, is from... Ali Elman, who is a longtime $50 patron, thanks again, Ali, who asks, PC games from your childhood. I am not so much a PC gamer, even today. You guys would know if you guys saw on the uh, Trash Taste podcast, or you guys follow me on Twitch, by the way, twitch.tv slash anime man, links in the description. Um, you guys would know I'm very much a console gamer. I mean, I do play PC games. Every now and then, don't get me wrong, I do have a Steam account and stuff like that, and I, I definitely did grow up in the in the PC gaming era of the late 90s and early 2000s, so I figured we would kind of go down memory lane, I would go in chronological order, I guess, from the my youngest memory playing PC games, to up until, I'd say around, you know, maybe high school times, I, I'd say I would maybe gauge that time of reference as my childhood, quote-unquote, so uh, we'll start from the very top. At least from what I can remember. And the first ever PC game I ever played, or I guess it's the first ever game I played ever, is uh, <laughs> Freddy Fish. You know, uh, some of you guys might be going, holy fucking shit, Joey also played Freddy Fish, hell yeah. And the rest of you will probably be going, the fuck is this? <laughs> so, Freddy Fish is a series, is a PC CD-ROM game series by, I believe, Marvelous Entertainment, I believe that's what they were called, and it's basically a point-and-click adventure game for children. Now, I, I believe, uh, when, when I looked on the Freddy Fish website, or the Marvelous website, the Wikipedia, I think it was like, this is aimed towards maybe around like ages three to five, which is probably around the time when I first started playing Freddy Fish, even earlier maybe, as, as early, because I kind of had a family PC ever since I was kind of born, because my dad uh, was in the IT department, so we had a, we, we were one of those families that had that one family PC that we all shared, and uh, Freddy Fish and the Case of the Missing Kelpsies, which I believe is the first game of the Freddy Fish franchise, I don't know how many games there were, I feel like I played most of them, up until maybe like the last couple of ones, because I kind of got a little too old at that point, but this is the first one, that they ever came out with, and this is definitely the one I played the most. I randomly saw a Let's Play of this the other day on YouTube, and it kind of brought back an entire wave of nostalgia of all these, like, old PC games I used to play. And I remember playing this over and over and over and over again. Well, primarily because this was really the only PC game we had at the time until my dad was like, oh, you like Freddy Fish, huh? Let me go get the second one and the third one and the fourth one. And it just kind of kept going. I'm not putting it in this video, but all the other Marvelous Entertainment games like Putt Putt and uh, Spy Fox was definitely Marvelous Entertainment. All those games, you know, Marvelous Entertainment, I feel kind of shaped my childhood from a very young age. And I feel that if you were born roughly around uh, when I was born, around the, the mid 90s, then uh, you would kind of relate to it, hopefully. The other uh, PC game I had 
as a child, kind of played it around uh, the same time I played Freddy Fish, was uh, <laughs> this game right here. Jumpstart Second Grade Math. It's an educational game. It's a math game for second graders. And I played this game like no fucking tomorrow. There's something about like the old 90s and early 2000s PC gaming era that really has a flavor. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's not exactly aged all that well, but it's not exactly aged all that badly. It kind of has its own distinct and unique flavor to it when it comes to its graphics and especially the voice acting. I mean, same thing can be said for the Freddy Fish games as well, but the voice acting in this game is is so 90s. It is so incredibly 90s. The mouth flaps just not matching at all. The the audio quality, the kind of like tinny audio quality of like 90s video game uh, voiceovers was just, to me, it's very nostalgic. And to me, it's like, it, it's very special. Call me stereotypical Asian, but like, I feel this is the game that got me interested in just maths and I, I feel if it wasn't for this game I wouldn't be nearly as good as in maths and the sciences in school than I am now or that than I was back in school. The one thing though about this game that is still traumatic is the that little like rat thing on the left side there that you can see. Like every time you complete a level in this game it cuts to a cutscene with the rat king him sitting on the throne and just going like, Nyeh, how dare you complete it? You'd never get up to me. And just like, I don't know, something about his art was so goddamn creepy that I, I remember for the longest time I couldn't actually complete the game because I didn't actually want to go to the final stage to meet the fucking Rat King. Like, he, he was so scary to me as a child, and I don't know why. He's still kind of creepy now when you look at him, but um, that was my run for educational PC games. And one other game on the PC, which uh, I was definitely too young to play, at the time, and I actually only just recently streamed it uh, on my Twitch, is uh, Riven, the sequel to Myst. Myst is a is a point-and-click game series that was really, really big in the 90s. I believe this is like one of the most like celebrated and uh, biggest uh, point-and-click CD-ROM games to like I think ever come out after Monkey Island. Riven, which is the second game in the Myst series, uh, was a game that my dad had. And my dad used to play quite a bit. And I used to watch him before I was able to, like, actually go on the computer. Just kind of watch him clicking around in this world. As a kid, when I finally got my hands on the PC and, you know, started playing games like the aforementioned uh, Jumpstart math game and Freddy Fish games and all the Marvelous games and stuff like that, I thought, you know what? I'm going to give I'm gonna give this Riven game a go. As a five-year-old playing this game, it's just a guessing game. I recently played this on stream because I had never gotten to an ending before. Because apparently there are eight endings in this game, and even for an adult, it is hard as shit to get to. So, on stream, I finally got to one of the endings. It ended up being the bad ending, obviously. The fact that I got way further in it, and I actually understood it so much more than when I was a kid, was uh, really gratifying and rewarding. But this game, even though it was made like 20-something years ago, this game still looks amazing. Like, this game has aged tremendously well. And if you like your kind of very kind of ambient, atmospheric, very artistic type of mystery-driven point-and-click games, I would definitely recommend it. Now, we're going to move away from the CD-ROM era and move more into the online browser games because, you know, again, I'm a kid of the early 2000s and growing up with a lot of Flash games on sites like Newgrounds and Albino Sheep and cool math games and all that kind of stuff that uh, unfortunately is probably not around anymore. So you kids today probably have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. But one of the first ever Flash games that I was addicted to, so much so to the point that I used to play this every goddamn day without fail, was Run. I don't know if this was the game that revolutionized the, the Endless Runner genre. Maybe it is, I don't know. But uh, out of all the Endless Runner games that I played, as a child and as an adult, Run was the one that really got me into it. Before they put a firewall on uh, Albino Sheep and Newgrounds and all these like Flash game sites, you know, during computer classes, because we used to have computer classes, uh, me and my friends would just boot up Run and see who could beat it first. We, we would like speed run Run and just like play it and see who could, you know, get to the furthest level before the teacher finds out and you get busted kind of thing. And this game, I feel, introduced me to flash games and just like flash 
the Flash media, essentially. I very much grew up with things like Newgrounds and, you know, Flash games, and which eventually led me onto things like Nico Nico Doga, which then eventually led me onto things like YouTube. I owe a lot to this game uh, for getting me into kind of the internet culture at the time, definitely. But as I grew a little bit older, I wanted to find complexity in my games a little bit more. You know, the simple was good, simple is best, but you know, complexity and tactics is also really fun. And the one game that definitely got me into tactical games, tactical RPGs especially, was Sid Meier's Civilization 2. There are a lot of Civilization games out there. Um, I think 5 is the one that a lot of people think about when they think of the Civ games. But for me, Civ 2 is definitely uh, the best one. And, you know, even here on the tagline, you can see the ultimate version of the best-selling strategy game. Which, you know, I completely agree with. I mean, I also played Civ 1 as well, the first Civilization game. And it was great. Don't get me wrong. Civ 1 was fantastic. But... I feel Civ 2 took everything that was great about Civ 1 and just perfected it. Again, this was another game where after school, me and a couple of my friends who were into the Civ games would come over to one of our houses, we would hook up the LAN and just play, you know, a, a fucking five hour session of Civ 2, which was like one game. Like, I never really got into like modern or ancient history, anything like that in school. I was pretty shit at history class, to be completely honest with you guys. This game definitely made me appreciate it a lot more until I t actually took history classes in high school and I fucking ended up hating it. But when you think of PC games, I think a lot of people think of one specific type of PC game, and that is the MMORPG genre. And one of the first MMOs that I heavily, heavily got into is, uh, and I guarantee you will never guess it, The Kingdom of Loathing. A lot of you guys might be looking at this and going, what? I don't actually remember how I found this game. Maybe a friend of mine got me into it. Basically, The Kingdom of Loathing is almost like a parody of MMOs. It basically takes the concept of super old form text-based RPGs and made it a parody. There was a really like popular uh, Flash game or Steam game called The uh, West of Loathing or something like that, the, the the Loathing of the West, or something like that. That was made by the same guys who developed the Kingdom of Loathing, and then the whole game is based on the Kingdom of Loathing MMO series. I eventually got a couple of my friends into it as well, and, you know, there's nothing more fun than playing an MMO with, like, IRL friends, you know, who understand what's going on, right? And we would, like, join uh, cults together, I think that's what they were called in this game. You could get these things called familiars, which were, like, little Pokemon-like creatures that would come with you and they were all parodies of different things and oh it's it was it was wonderful it was brilliant the best thing about it is is that i could play this at school in front of the teacher and because it's a text-based game most of the time the teacher would have no idea that i am playing an mmo like obviously if you're on your school computer and you were playing you know starcraft or you know warcraft or anything like that immediately the teacher would be like why are you playing games get off the game but if you look at any screenshot from the kingdom of loathing game you the teacher had no fucking idea that i was playing a game they, were, they thought i was like reading something and that was the great thing about it right is that like the dialogue in this game was so good and i feel this is one of the games that might have honestly subconsciously gotten me into dialogue based media you know like you know obviously you guys know i love me my monogatari series right heavily dialogue based and even my comedy series that i really enjoy a lot of it is dialogue based comedy that i really love and i feel the kingdom of loathing kind of was the one that got me into especially the dialogue based comedy side of things so i owe a lot to this game for getting me into all sorts of cool and interesting mediums. Uh, you know, I also love parody as well and satire and stuff like that. And this game did it so goddamn well. But another MMO that I got into at the same time as The Kingdom of Loathing, and that was the biggest mistake. You can't get into two MMOs at the same time. I somehow did though, because I was a child, was uh, a little more stereotypical in my case. It's Maple Story. I played the Maple Story before they, uh, they made things a lot easier for the West. I played like the original like Korean uh, variant of Maple Story, where like to get from level one to level two, you had to kill like five thousand level one boars or some some crazy shit like that. Like the level capping was so insanely high. But I did it because I really enjoyed the art. I really enjoyed the story. I mean, Maple Story definitely was one of those games that really got me into the whole like art aesthetic 
of uh, like anime and stuff like that, like the anime aesthetic in games and whatnot. And I feel this is the game that really got me into just anime games in general. I might even almost think that this game was the game that got me into things like visual novels as well. I got a couple of my IRL friends into this game. Super fun, super adorable. This is really famous. I don't have to go deep into it, but I think it's still going, right? I think still a lot of people play this game, so good on Maple Story, I guess, for making it really just solid MMO. And the final PC game that uh, I also heavily, heavily got into, and I got into this game one, when it first came out, which was, I think, when I was around, like, high school? I was maybe about 14, 15 when this game came out. This was the first game that I would actually stay up with my high school friends, like, all night on Skype at the time. This is the first time I ever, like, stayed up till the next morning playing video games. And it was, uh, Terraria. Not Minecraft. I know. It's not like I don't enjoy Minecraft. I, I absolutely adore Minecraft. Minecraft's a, a solid fucking game. But something about Terraria, I just enjoyed a whole lot more. Maybe it's because it's, like, kind of in two-dimensional side-scrolling style, which I grew up with. You know, I feel a lot of people just chalk up Terraria to just be the, the Minecraft 2D ripoff, but it is so much more than that. I feel it's a lot darker and creepier a lot of times and has way cooler monsters in my opinion like some of the some of the bosses that you can fight in terraria are so goddamn cool and just imaginative like so much more imaginative than the enemies in minecraft i feel so yeah this is like this is so awesome i freaking love it but there you go ali that was my pc games from my childhood i hope i answered your question thank you once again for the suggestion and hey again if you would like to suggest a topic for me in a video of its own like this then again make sure to go over to my patreon patreon.com slash the anime man join the 25 or 50 dollar patron but uh 25 is the minimum because I, I didn't want to make the it, it too low of a bar otherwise i would get you know thousands and thousands of videos from you guys and i wouldn't be able to fulfill all of them so sorry for the the high cap or anything but uh you know if you would like to support Support your boy on the main channel and the second channel or just everything that I do. I have all sorts of other cool rewards that are easily accessible with a lower amount as well. So again, it's not mandatory. If you don't want to, then that's completely okay. Thanks for sticking around until the end of this video and thanks for supporting the channel. Now I really want to go back and like play some of these like PC games from my childhood, just childhood games in general on my Twitch maybe. I think that might be a cool thing to do. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys thought about my uh, PC games from my childhood. Any of the games that maybe you pl played as well. And uh, let me know some of the PC games that you played in your childhood as well. I'd be really interested to know from uh, different perspectives and different age groups. I think it'd be quite interesting. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.